<clears throat> Mic check, one, two, one, two. Mic check. I have to do this. Hello. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome to Camille A. Brown Turf Talk. With myself, Malik Washington, and Timothy Edwards. sign on. Did he? He did. Here he goes. Here we go, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, he had to change the scenery up. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> What's going on, brother? Not that much, bro. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I figured since we're talking about turf, I'd be outside. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna try that, and I was like, "Yeah, this Wi-Fi, yeah. the way the way this city works, <laughs> we, I'm not gonna would, test it." It'd be literally uh, be a that? sketch. Uh, 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 <laughs> everyone, yours, yours your kids not messing it. up. <laughs> yours just did it. Get it? See, I'm about to get in trouble. <laughs> Michael, what it you went, talking about? Oh, really? See, it did it again. I'm messing with you. What are you I'm playing? You. I can't tell, Tim. <laughs> okay. Hey, everybody. I'm How not you trying doing? to get yelled at. <laughs> no, but seriously, now your Wi-Fi is really messing up. Oh. Is it? <laughs> hey, Malik. <laughs> yes, it is. We jinxed it. All right. All right, let me go ahead and change the it's scenery. It's not that up. bad. No, yeah, okay. go inside, go inside. I love it though. All right, all right. See, see what we see what we do here. Wait one second. Listen, but I do. I enjoy your garden. I know you're gardening. You know I am. Your, your vegetables and flowers. So come on, come through. <laughs> all right, how, how's this? Is better? This is better. All right. You get, everyone, you get to see uh, Tim's beautiful home. <laughs> Don't look at the address. I shouldn't put it on the front. I sit on the front porch. That's good. There we go. I do it on the stoop. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So everyone, today, this is a talk about turf talk. Uh, my name is Malik Washington. I'm a member of Camille Brown and Dancers, and this is Timothy Edwards. Okay. Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, See, Michael Kilgore, you're not funny. <laughs> yes, let's get into it. Sorry, Michael Kilgore was throwing a lot of jokes out. Um, so in this, Come in this talk, with your metric. <laughs> in this talk, I think we want to kind of just open, open a have an open dialogue with everyone, um, and kind of talk about turf, talk about the creation of turf in the work Inc. Um, that premiered in 2017. Um, that we're companies currently touring. And also just kind of have a, just have a real talk, just have a one-on-one, -on one-on many uh, real talk about turf and what that means and what it means for us and for you out there. I mean, real, please chime in um, during this discussion. Uh, just you know, to... there's a little question box right there. So if you write any questions, we'll answer them. Uh, and yes, but uh, I will just, well, I'll ask you, Tim, um, when you were first creating turf, because I feel like you were creating this before I even entered the piece. Uh-huh. Uh, what was the change for you when you really started to uh, feel like that, um, that sensory of everything, like, like you started to make sense, everything started to click together? So, yes. Yeah, so great question, Malik Washington. Thank you so much. Um, so when I first started, when I first started making turf, which was a while ago, um, 
Camille really wanted to start, when she first started creating it, she started putting this idea uh, on Jewel, Jewel D. Lane as another um, male um, company member, excuse me, in the company and myself. And she started dealing with this idea of rage and what it looks like, dealing with this emotion of this very strong emotion inside of a black man. And what does it feel like when it comes out and we're able to express it outwardly and what happens when we have to contain it. Um, and then from that, which was a very exhausting emotionally, a black male's body and how do we express it? So it's not just rage, but what is exhaustion? What is happiness, you know, and what is this playfulness, cockiness? So it kind of started going into this, this different loop. And I think what actually, when it started resonating in my own body um, was when I started with allowing myself to think of my own instances and my own experiences um, and think of the different stories of my life and the different things that, that attach to me versus trying to tap into the, just one emotion, letting myself tap into the many different emotions. And I think that's when it started to make sense in my own body. And, and, and for myself, I dance from a very illustrated place and from a very uh, character base and a very storytelling base. Um, so for me, you know, I, and trust me, I can hit a step now. I can hit a five, six, seven, eight real quick. But I, I really enjoy coming from a place where I can dance a story versus dancing a step. And that's why I love working with Camille. Um, so when it, I could actually put my own stories into what was happening is when I think it started to really resonate in my body and, and, and come to full, full flourishing. And of course, she stepped into it and it started getting nice. It was cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's so rude. Y'all should have seen what he texted me before we even joined this conversation. <laughs> uh, and it, it's so, interesting that Tim says that. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. You had a question for me? No, no, no. I was going to ask you. I mean, I was going to ask you the same question, but what were you going to oh. say? Uh, no, I, I'll answer the same question. I think it was because, remember, I saw, I saw you guys do parts of Inc. when you were at uh, Florida State. Um, so I saw the video oh, right. before that's we right. even right. entered uh, Jacob's Pillow. Um, so if everyone doesn't know the idea of the trilogy of what we're talking about, how we get to Inc. Um, before that is uh, Mr. Tolly Rants. Um, that's in 2015? Mm -hmm. 13. Mr. Tolly Rants in 2012. 12. Uh, yep. 2015 is Black Girl Linguistic Play. Mm -hmm. And then 2017 is Inc. Yeah. Uh, and all of these are transitions of uh, past, present, and the idea of the uh, maturation through the presence of a lens through a, uh, a woman's eye and through a, uh, a community's eye when you have ink. But inside of the community, we see these ideas of these two young men. Um, when I was first seeing ink um, without everything kind of with the finishing touches and everything inside of it, um, it resonated with me just because of the drums, you know? It was that mm. idea of like, I've heard drums my entire life. So yeah. uh, with African dance, um, and it, it, it was, it, it helped me find a route to it before I, I got so excited just hearing that there was something, you know, that was like, oh, it's from your your people, your, 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 your heart, that pounding that you hear every time. And I yep. think all the same things that you were talking about, the, the energy and the motions I saw, so I wanted okay. to be a part of it. So it, it's also like when you see someone in their turf mm -hmm. and you're like, yo, but I think that person's cool. And you kind of want to get down with the crew. Mm -hmm. yep. How do you get down with the crew without feeling uh, antsy, feeling clumsy, and still being your authentic self? So while one person is in it, and they're trying to find it. There's another person on the outside, and I always feel like the little brother out of all of them, because you know I'm the youngest, I'm the cutest, I'm the smartest, ba I'm barely. the most talented, barely. you know, all those things. And barely. then <laughs> I'm trying to sneak in with my big bros and trying to still find my way. And that's what happens in the company as well, uh, all of us together. I think even though I'm the little brother, I'm like the, the one that's the most uh, social media savvy and stuff, so I can always help them. That's true. But that's true. Things we, like we that. Grandpa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, they are some grandpas. So we help each other <laughs> in that way, off stage and on. So I think that's when it started connecting. Yes. Nice, nice. What I, so what I heard you say in all of that is that you thought I was a cool kid. And I appreciate that. <laughs> I appreciate that. So question for you. So, so you're talking about this thing of surf. Uh, and pardon us, everyone that's watching. Um, first of all, thanks for freaking on us. Um, yes. We're, just, we're, we're, we're a bit silly. Um, 
you know, so just rock with us. Uh, this idea, so we're saying turf, 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 turf. Mm -hmm. So uh, to you, Malik, um, two-part two question. To you, Malik, what is turf to you in the piece? And then what is turf to you in, in just your everyday facet of who Malik Washington is? Turf to me in the piece is the stripping away of layers that I think identified me as a black man. Okay. Not not stripping, right. but kind of like peeling them off and like letting someone see them. Uh, it's the best way of me to reveal all the emotions that I felt as a child without crying about it. I feel like mm. that's, I, I wasn't given that opportunity to let those things out because sometimes as a black man or, or growing up as a young black boy, you're already put as a man as like yeah. five, be a man, don't cry, all those things. So that kind of gets put into your head innately sometimes. Absolutely. Um, so I think that was a great way of like kind of getting my badges off and like releasing them and pulling that weight off. So when I did finish, yeah. uh, it felt like I actually did have turf. Like I, I, I started to conquer all those spaces that I thought I conquered, but they were just kind of bottled up. Um, yeah, and now uh, when I think of actual turf, you know, it's my neighborhood. I lived in the same neighborhood my almost my entire life. Like I've Boogie only lived Boogie in the Bronx. same. Yeah, it's the Bronx. Um, <laughs> I lived in the same 10 mile radius for 30 mm. years. And wow. it, it's kind of crazy. Even though I left, that was always home. Like Bronx is always the place where I can come back and I see kids playing and it gives me ideas for a piece or I hear something like the train. And those beats and rhythms that I hear start to give me ideas for movement and for, uh, you know, everything. So my turf is also my surroundings and what they uh, add to my life. Nice, nice. Get it. Okay. Um, Vice versa. <laughs> Vice versa. Piggyback. Hey, kitty, cat scratch. Just saw uh, cat, cat, Captain Foster. Um, I think for myself, so in the piece, in the piece itself, I think turf for myself, how I see it is, is, I don't want it to sound heady, but it's almost, it's almost understanding life from a tangible state to an intangible state. Uh, it's like when you're a kid, all you see is what you can touch. All you yeah. understand is, is, you know, is what the smells, the feels, the touch, you know? So it's literally for me in the piece itself, it literally is the space around us. It literally is, you know, audience is over there, or whoever is over there, but this area right here is us. This is what we do. This is how we do it. And then it kind of transforms into this thing of this is my understanding. This is who I am, and this is what I am. Right. And this is what my brother is, and this is the area and space that, we, that we're going to protect. Um, so that's kind of how the, the, the transition for the piece goes for myself. Um, and then I think for myself in life, I think my turf... For, for those who don't know, I'm a military kid um, and I was born and raised in Hawaii. And so this idea of black identity was never a, a, a concrete thing. From, and it's no shade to my, my, my parents at all. I mean, I grew up in a very Christian family, a very uh, religious family. You know, past, pastor's kid, you know, deacon kid. My mom was evangelist. So we grew up, so church was my turf. That's what I knew. Mm -hmm. um, but moving away from Hawaii, and then going into in, here into New York, I think that's when I finally understood what this skin color was and, and, and started understanding who I was as a black man. And so I think doing the piece now and, and just in my everyday life, I think knowing who I am and, and my stories is my turf. And mm -hmm. I, think, um, I think that's why the climate and where the world is right now, I think it's such... Not to get so so political or anything like that, but I think the the attack on black bodies and and their stories is is where I get activated and where I get like no this is this is my ish I don't want to cuss on IG live but I'm gonna get IG to shut us down this is my ish so like that's kind of my turf right now it's my identity you know it's like and it's fascinating to hear like your black lives do matter honey let me tell you all black lives matter um, all of them. is that all of them, is that, you know, it's funny that, and this is the interesting thing about Aiken Mill's work and about just art in general, is that our tapestries of our life, though it's so different, when you put it together, it tells such a profound story because my turf is who I am. And I'm not saying that we don't cross, you know, cross intersect our meanings, mm -hmm. but like, 
I never had a, uh, I never had a, uh, an attachment to an actual pavement of turf, a place right. of turf. You know, I rep Hawaii, you know, I'm, I love Hawaii, but it's not really like my thing of like, but you know, it's just, there's so much other things that I, you know, my story is, is, is my turf and putting us together, it tells a beautiful story. It, it's me. also interesting that you say that because it then brings, I see a Desola was in here as well. And uh, I remember, so, so what's up, Ade? Um, and I remember talking to him when he was talking about from, uh, from like the Boogie Down Bronx and dancing like in clubs to going on stage and this yeah. idea of, you know, um, battling on, on uh, in, the, in the clubs and then battling on stage with or trying to battle into like Broadway. Um, mm. And then it also made me think as a kid, the idea of turf, I, I grew up in uh, Hunts Point. Uh, if people know about Hunts Point back in the days, it was like, it was grungy. I lived across the street from a jail and then mm. up the block, there were so many gangs that I wasn't allowed to do certain things that most kids were able to do just on like regular holidays, like yeah. Halloween. I was not allowed to go out for Halloween because kids would, what they used to call like a buck 50 to someone's face and like mm. cut them. And this yeah. was the time of uh, Bloods, Crips, you know, Latin Kings. And I knew what colors not to wear. Like I wear purple because <laughs> one of Camille's favorite <laughs> colors. But at the same time, this is a neutral color in certain areas, yeah. you know. Um, so it's that kind of yeah, idea of turf as well of these people fighting for something that they don't own. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you work in real estate. So it's now that jail that I grew up across is no longer there and it was bought out. Yeah. The block that was up the street that those gangs used to like say, yo, this is mine. You can't come over here is owned by someone else. So this Absolutely. idea of turf has to be a bigger thing of self of like yeah. this turf. Uh, Absolutely. That's a change of mentality as well that has to happen as you get Absolutely. older. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. That's a beautiful way of saying it. And that's kind of, I think that's kind of what I think of like being in the piece. It's like this tangible thing of like, and it's fascinating you say that these things that people hold on to and, and whoever, I mean, it could be whoever, people that people hold on to, you have to really evaluate is what I'm holding on to worth holding on to because it's in mine. Or am I holding right. on to something, somebody else's property? Right. You know what I'm saying? And then, then, then I think that really. And I think where this is coming from is like, you know, you had posed a question to me um, the day, yesterday or the day before, yesterday. When I got to work, yesterday about like dancers and what's mm -hmm. dancers turf. And it's just fascinating to me. Like, you know, there's no, there's no shade or no, there's no putting down other forms of dance, but it's always fascinating to me to watch dancers who by you demean their own culture's dance. And it's like, what, what is it about your turf that you don't want to claim or respect or protect but you're holding on to this other turf you know what i mean i don't know if i'm making i missed sense, that but... beginning part i oh, missed that the... beginning part of the question you missed the best the part be it was probably the best part right it was the best part i, I mean well, come on award winning no no i'm just saying it's just fascinating when you pose that question about dancers and, and their turf and what they hold on to and just in the concepts of styles and in the concepts of culture is yeah. that you know people don't hold on to whatever it is they don't hold on to their own turf and don't, don't, and I don't, I don't want to say not respect, but they don't uphold it and, and protect it, but they'll mm -hmm. hold on and protect something else that really is somebody else's turf. Mm -hmm. And so it's just fascinating to me. It just, it's, I, I mean, that's what comes this, up for me. I've said this multiple times. I am so grateful <laughs> to be where I am now in my yeah. career while this is happening because mm -hmm. I've danced in companies, which are saying is like, I danced for, you know, predominantly white companies that were run by white people, which is not an issue. I learned a lot from these people. They gave me great information. But it's at the life. same I mean, time, there was no representation of me. Yeah. And at times I was sitting there like, oh, OK, I just got to go along with it because I'm getting a check. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for yeah, certain yeah. people, that's the mindset, the money behind it. And then as you keep going, something changes in your head and you're like, Nah, man, it's, it's not fulfilling enough. Absolutely. And it's very hard for certain dancers, especially when you feel like you're a token, that if you leave, you won't get another opportunity to have a job again because you, you left. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I, feel, I feel extremely blessed in the fact that, uh, that my journey in dance started much later in life. Um, so I mm -hmm. feel like I 
I told myself that, you know, when I was going to school, that I was fortunate enough to see different choreographers and I was at a certain age where I was like, look, this is, if it's gonna happen now, I have to make sure I curate my career to where I want it to be because, you know, dancers don't, don't, don't dance until, you know, whatever age, you know, you're working on your body, right. your body's time. So I really told myself that I would choose choreographers that I, where I, the spaces that I wanted to be in. But what you're saying is kind of how I correlate to when I was in the military, yeah. that I kind of just swallowed a lot of things because I needed that check. I swallowed a lot of comments and I worked in a very, mm. very racist, uh, uh, um, uh, I mean, I was, I was, in a, I was worked as a, 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 not a rap, a rap con, I worked in a rap con. I was an air traffic controller. And okay. so the space was the space was very small, very few people, and I was one of the, I was the only black uh, soldier that was working in there, you know. Mm. And so, but I, I swallowed, I had to swallow so many different things just because it's a job, and I and all these things. So I kind of correlated to how dancers are and what you're saying is they do it for those reasons. But it's when it, when you are gonna be who you know, the turf is who you are. I think that's when it becomes important. Or you understand who you are. And I think me and you have heard Camille even uh, speak on it herself of like her regaining her own turf, her, uh, yeah. you know, and that's, and we always say this in the company, we can't do this alone. We we Absolutely. always need each other. Um, and that idea of community, uh, especially for Inc. is so powerful uh, yeah. because even me and Tim can't grow without our community around us kind of supporting us um, on the outsides. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so that even happens with Camille to create something that takes almost 10 years to make uh, in three different pieces. And they're all yeah. so uh, carefully choreographed, carefully crafted, beautifully. Uh, the stories are beautifully told that you can't just throw that out and just make it like it's a microwave process. It takes so yeah. much maturation inside of the pieces to yeah. even get yeah. us to those uh, conversations. So that's really amazing that we see her turf uh, get bigger and bigger because even look at this now, you're watching this and some, some of you might've just found out about Camille. Some of you might have known about her for 10 years. Some of you might've been following mm -hmm. her since she was in high school, but look at how her turf has grown to that little black girls, little black boys are following her to do the exact same things that she's doing. I know I did. I met her when I was 17, yeah. and now look. But you know what's fascinating, too, and I just want to add to that, is that you can also, add, and what I want to implore people to do is not look at what space she's in, but look at what mm -hmm. her voice is doing, what her body is doing. Right. That's, that's the right. turf that she's claiming. She's, she's, and it's fascinating, because I, I seen Camille before that, and, and, and not to say that she was not repping who she is and none of that stuff at all, but I'm saying she kind of honed in on what is important to her and what, what means in this idea of social dance and, and having the importance of understanding that it is a technique and it is something that, that needs to be respected as much as any other form because there is a technique. This is, comes from our people. It's in our blood. It's, that's the, the, I think, the claiming of like, of like no, this is, this is a real thing and this needs to be respected. I think that, that claiming, I think, is the most important and most intriguing and most inspiring thing that, that I watch versus what space she's in. You know, because she's telling this crap. Anything she do, she could point her foot and do a thing yeah. and do a twirl, and she'll get in that space. But it's Dope. the fact that she's yeah, Dope. Dope. Uh, but it's the fact that she's speaking and and making her truth and her stamp in the world. What what is her turf? Is I think it's fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And it's you know? kind of it's basically what you just said too to see how because I get inspired by her for the fact that yo she took a big leap of faith of being like I'm going to remove this European yeah. aesthetic that I've been taught for so long and yeah. add the things that I did when I was a kid that I loved. Yeah. Like how many of us would actually take that chance to be like, I'm gonna put this in a dance, double Dutch without rope, or yeah. we're gonna do Juba and bring yeah. that idea of the cake walk back. We're gonna bring all these stories back of education that they have not told us in books. So yeah. everything that you're seeing being done on Instagram of reposting songs and things like that, this woman was doing research. Absolutely. For years. Absolutely. And by seeing that, that made me go back and be like, yo, let me look at all these things that I learned, but then look at all the things that I missed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, that I can absolutely. bridge the gap. Yep. And that's the thing. And, and if I have learned anything regarding turf and regarding 
um, my own personal uh, claiming of my turf um, from watching her is that it's so important because it brings about education. If you just think about it, I always think about this all the time. When you ask anybody, say, let's kick it back 10 years or kick it back to any or, or go to people that are not really uh, uh, around, you know, um, the African diaspora, these, these different right. styles and movements. Right. And you ask somebody about hip hop and they look at it and be like, oh, no, that, you know, bop, 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 bop. You know, but now she's getting to be in spaces or any other style of dance. But then now she's be able to get into spaces where she's claiming her own turf and being, you know, who and bring respect to what she does and who, who and us, our our, yeah. our movement, our who we are. And now people are seeing it as a form of respect because they're getting educated by it. And I think it's so important that on, we don't. Be coming back. Be coming back. Be back. Okay. I always been here. Where you been? You was a. <laughs> It's, it's always when I it's always when I'm spitting that like award winner stuff. Let me tell you now. But no, I'm just saying that you, it's, you go into your Speedy Gonzalez when you go fast. Yeah. Be like, it's trying I go, to catch I, up with you. I go back into my air traffic control days. Be talking fast. Um, but I just think I, I and I, I always implore my students. I always implore people that I'm around. You know, that, to really just claim their turf of who they are and claim their turf of 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 their culture and of all that because it's so important. Because if you just claim it and walk in your truth, people around you are gonna inevitably get educated yeah inevitably and that's the, so it's such important in this climate right now you know and, uh, uh, this is something to tell the young black students out there when you're going to some of these colleges that colleges that might be predominantly white uh and that might have more of a eurocentric uh background don't minimize your yourself absolutely for not. anyone else and oh, i know absolutely i had not. that issue when uh i went to college because i was like one of the you know, like it was maybe five black students out of all four years in the whole dance yeah. program. And yeah. we literally helped each other to be like, nah, man, do that the way that you would do it. Continue. Yeah. If you're going to do three turns, do three turns. Don't let that teacher just tell you, you only practice one because there's versatility in everything that we do when it comes to this dance world. Just because that teacher didn't like the way you did something doesn't mean that another choreographer outside of that, that institution won't love who you are and what you bring. I, it took me a while to get to that place. And Absolutely. college kind of broke me apart when it came to that. I left early. Mm. I felt like I, I wasn't good enough to do things. They ripped my, like, my passion away. And I've heard other people say that as well. So I guess it's, I needed someone that was right behind me to be like, they have done it before as well. And they went their own path and they made it. Look at all yeah. of a, anybody in this company has made their own path in their own way. We're all successful. We all help each other. And that's the way I've always wanted to see dance. And I've only seen it like this really in like this company. Um, and it's a beautiful thing to always get to witness. And I'm privileged. I know I'm privileged mm. to have this situation. So grateful. Come on, come on. You always bring, you always bring it with that, that, that heart. Come on now. <laughs> If I had an organ, boy, I'd be playing right now. I think we got time for one, maybe one more question, right? Yeah. Yeah, sorry. We, we didn't really go chat, chatterbox all day long. So I'll see you, you Tamisha. Tamisha. Tamisha, guy. Young yeah. princess in the house. I see you, mama. Absolutely. Uh, if anybody wants to ask one more question, uh, absolutely. If there's no questions, me and Tim will just kind of we'll maybe talk next. it out. I think I have one uh, more question for you. I, well, I had a question for you then, too. So uh, you asked your question to me. Asked so my question to you is, so in today's climate, I mean, obviously, you know, we all know what's going on and we all are, are in this movement together. Um, Happy what, what, what do you feel? Or how do you feel people are claiming their turf? I mean, it, it's, Yo, I don't man, know. It, it's, it's pretty. No, it's not a silly question. I see. Uh, Cause you know I'm like in Harlem and I'm in the Bronx. I'd be around in the city, uh, downtown. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's really amazing to see people kind of have this newfound idea of space because you're told to give people space. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. uh, and then that idea also this idea of protesting and activating that so mm -hmm. many people are doing it in so many ways, um, and they're showing up. Uh, so I think the idea of turf has kind of what we talked about. It has yeah. spread from this idea of being so materialistic and being like, oh, my building is my turf, that we're also like, nah, my brothers and my sisters, my kings, my queens, you're my turf. I have to our protect stories. you as well. Yep. 
have Absolutely. to connect and make this chain that links around the whole country to let them know you can't break our bond. You brought us here in chains and we're still connected. Absolutely. We're still connected. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. What you want to ask me? And for you, sir, I would say, <laughs> you know what? It's a crazy thing because I think that you're one of the most profound actors that I know. Tim is really great at uh, always helping oh, us no. with acting. Mm -hmm. And if you need to watch it, if, if there's something that we're not getting in the company, uh, energetically wise, uh, I always look wow. to Tim because I know if he's doing whatever he's doing it, I'm like, oh, okay, I can either go try to top him or go right under because those are the levels that we need to play. Everybody can't be at wow. the same. It's like a band. You know, um, Thanks, Malia. so Thanks, Malia. I, when when you're tapping into this physicality, because this is a different tool that a lot of dancers don't know how to use. <laughs> <laughs> how? I, I'm just being honest. It's yeah, not yeah, a I thing that's taught. This like acting portion. How did you start to find that turf of really realizing woo, the power of gestures, of face, of acting? portraying, seeing. Oh, wow. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not a question. That's not a, that's not a question you asked 30 seconds before commercial break. Um, <laughs> uh, honestly, you know, so at first I want to say this. I want to say that it's not that, I, it's not that dancers don't know how to use their face because you walk in the world every day using your face. We are just trained not to use our face and therefore we rely on each other. That's, that's, that's that thing of turf in dance world that I was talking about. People kind of shed themselves of who they are and of their own stories to hang on to these other ideals of turf of these other ideals that that is not I hate to say not yours you're a master at it you're great at it but it's not yours and just releasing who you are and I think once you understand that who you are is the most important part of the place that you're in then that way you can tap into your stories which inevitably bring about the emotions which inevitably bring about you know when I when I'm doing what I'm doing and I have so much learning to do. And I have, you know, I, I follow so many people that I, I, I respect and honor. But when I'm tapping into what I'm doing, I'm just tapping into who I am. It's the faces I make. It's not the faces right. I'm contriving. You know what I'm saying? Unless Camille's like, I want mm -hmm. you to go to the, you know, the, the extreme with this right. thing, then I'm going to contrive what it is. Yeah. If I'm just telling my story, I'm just doing that, telling my story. If, I'm, if it's something that hurts me, I'm not thinking of, okay, what is my face doing? Okay. I'm going to be like, I'm living in that pain. I'm living in that 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 moment if it's something that's hilarious to me i'm living in that moment when i'm sitting there jumping like when we're in turf and we're jumping those 16 jumps though it's exhausting <laughs> i'm i'm really in that black boy joy moment of trying to trying to be on my trampoline doing what you're doing trying to make the flips and it's not a right. thing of i'm trying to trying to make up how that makes me feel i just have to understand that what my needs to be honored so i can live in that you know what i'm saying so it's more of it's less of the acting of it, it's just more of trusting yourself in it and, and, and honoring yourself. I think it's the biggest part of it. Right. Yeah. Uh, I will answer uh, your, your, your amazing Tim. That was a great answer. Tamika was just saying, uh, good, important talk, y'all. Thanks for doing this. Can't say thank you. Keep it up. Uh, you are very welcome, Tamika. And Suki, yo, what up, Suki? You remember Suki filmed our Suki. duet when we were with Kenya? Oh, oh, oh. Um, oh, so Suki. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, what kinds of turf do you uh, do you two hope to move into moving forward? You know what? I just want to be on the turf for being on stage with the homies again and uh, going back on tour. Um, I think I'm I'm ready because now people are trying to see everything that we that that's going on. I think our pieces are going to help have a little bit more education and uh, conversation. I think the idea of art is going to push these topics even further, and it's not going to oh, get quiet. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So I feel like when we start to go back into touring and uh, showing work, these are the things that people are going to want to see even more. So y'all know, you know our uh, agent, her name is Pam. <laughs> go to the website. If y'all looking at up. this and y'all want to see this work of Mr. Tolerance, Black Girl Linguistic Play. Come and on, plug. Come, on, plug. Come on, you know, I cook it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, think, I think Suki for myself, uh, yes, absolutely. I'm going to piggyback off of, of uh, Malik and say yes to all those things. But also, you know, it's fascinating. And I was just talking to my my, uh, talking to my husband about this. It's like being in these spaces right now, the spaces, spaces I'm in, I live in Long Island. Um, That's a whole but thing. I live in Suffolk County. 
County. So, I mean, and it's, it's a very, I hate to say it, but it's a very segregated place. Um, so I, as much as it is, it's hard to be out this way, so far out this way, for the purpose of being a very proud black man. Um, and, and a black man that mm -hmm. sits in his, insists in his own truth and, and is unapologetic about it. Um, it is hard. It is hard. It's hard when you go to Home Depot and someone looks at you and starts spouting out the person they're next to you about how protesters are barbaric only because they saw me stand right behind them. Like, it's, it's those things. Yeah, so... <laughs> is the place I'm at right now. I want to affect this place, you know? And I think... And, I, and I'm so proud of all people because they're like, no, the spaces that we're in right now, the turf that we're in, this is our turf. And therefore, you know, you're going to understand these black bodies and these stories. And, and you know, so I, I, I think that's where I'm at. And I also want to be back with my family, the CABD team. I miss y'all. Right. Yep. You know, so. I miss you too. And you know what? And I'll be wearing these shirts like every day because I'm not going to speak to nobody. I don't talk to no Karens. I don't talk to no Kevins. I don't argue with them. I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> uh, I just point. Yeah. And keep it moving it. Um, it. because we've already said this enough times. And if you still want to argue with somebody, remember from a distance, if you're arguing with somebody, nobody knows who's the fool. So I'm not Say going that. to argue Say that again. and sit there and Absolutely. scream with somebody because obviously you're angry about something that you have no control over because you yeah. have no control over me, my turf. This is my turf, my body. Absolutely. So when I wear this, and I wear this, you're going to see it everywhere, everywhere. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Fist up. We appreciate you all for watching this. Absolutely. Please continue to watch Camille A. Brown, Love you, Dancers. You know, thank you, yes. Beatrice. Thank you, Suki, for the questions. Thank you, Tamika. Absolutely. Thank you, Tamisha. Thank you, Ade, for coming up on here as well. We appreciate Absolutely. all the people coming through for interviews, uh, all of the dancers. There will be more going on for July. Please watch yes. out. Uh, and some of us are teaching classes very soon. I know I'll be teaching class next week, Monday. Oh, no, the 29th, not the 22nd. Look, look at Camille Brown. Enjoy your Good Juneteenth because it's coming up. Ooh. And love all y'all. Love you, Malik. And I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye, Amy. I'll be dancing. I'll be at somebody's cookout tomorrow. <laughs> Me too. I'll be cooking. Bye, everybody. <laughs>